Today is day one for the Come Follow Me readings for this week, March 13th through the 19th. Monday, March 13th, 2023, Matthew 11, 1 through 27. Improving personal study. Be consistent. You may have days when studying the scriptures seems more difficult or less impactful than you hoped. Don't give up. Elder David A. Bednar taught our consistency in doing seemingly small things can lead to significant spiritual results. President Dallin H. Oaks taught the scriptures, which are the revelations of the past, cannot be understood without openness to the revelations of the present. A study of the scriptures enables men and women to receive revelations. Chapter 11. Jesus acclaims John as more than a prophet. The cities of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum are rebuked for unbelief. The Son reveals the Father. The yoke of Christ is easy, and his burden is light. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Did John the Baptist doubt that Jesus was the Messiah? While Jesus was ministering throughout the cities of Galilee, John the Baptist, who had been put into prison by Herod, sent two of his disciples to inquire of Jesus to reassure their faith. Many have thought this event reflected a lack of confidence in John's own mind. However, Jesus took the occasion to bear testimony of the great work John had done, emphasizing that he was unwavering and true. Robert J. Matthews further explained that John wanted his followers to become disciples of Jesus Christ. The question they were to put to Jesus was for their, their edification, not for his own. John knew, as no one else knew, who Jesus was, and he had known it for a long time. He had had revelation from heaven to this effect. He had seen with his eyes, he had heard with his ears, and he had the testimony of the Holy Ghost. The most satisfactory answer seems to be that John sent his disciple, disciples to question Jesus about his identity so that they themselves would at, last, would, at would at long last realize the truth of what John had been testifying. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Elder George Kleibengat said, President Nelson also taught that those who choose the Lord's way will likely endure persecution. Being counted worthy to suffer shame for his name may at times be our lot as we allow his voice to take priority over any other. Blessed is he, the Savior said, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Elsewhere we learn that great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing. So let's ask ourselves, am I enduring for a while? But when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by am I offended? Am I firmly built on the rock of Jesus Christ and his servants? And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Jesus Christ referred to himself when he spoke of he that is least in the kingdom of God. As the prophet Joseph Smith explained, 
Whom did Jesus have reference to as being the least? Jesus was looked upon as having the least claim in God's kingdom, and seemingly was least entitled to their cred cred credulity as a prophet. As though he had said, He that is considered the least among you is greater than John, that is, I myself. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Joseph Smith translation, starting with uh, verse 13 says, But the days will come when the violent shall have no power, for all the prophets and the law prophesied, that it, sh it should be thus unto John. Yea, as many as have prophesied have foretold of these days. And if you will receive it, barely he was the Elias who was for to come and prepare all things. John the Baptist was a forerunner to Jesus Christ. After the disciples of John departed, John, uh, Jesus began teaching the people about the greatness of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was foreordained to be a forerunner to Jesus Christ, a mission that fulfilled Old Testament prophecy as made clear in the Joseph Smith translation. The following scripture passages describe John the Baptist's foreordained mission as a forerunner to Jesus Christ. Isaiah 43, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. As with so many Old Testament prophecies, this passage has more than one meaning. The Savior clearly identified the voice in the wilderness as John the Baptist. But if this forerunner was to prepare the way for the per person who was to tell Jerusalem that times of trial were over, then the prophet clearly could not be referring only to John the Baptist's mortal ministry. Elder George Tez Teasdale said, Instead of speaking comforting words to Jerusalem, he, Christ, exclaimed, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Were these comforting words to Jerusalem? I think not. It is very evident that John the Baptist was not only the forerunner for his first coming, but also of his second advent. The scriptures are plain on this matter. Only with the second coming of the Lord will Jerusalem find forgiveness and peace. Therefore, the reference to the voice in the wilderness, John the Baptist, makes making a straight way in the desert, applies to his ministry as a forerunner of both the former and the latter days. Luke quoted Isaiah 45, 3-5, not only verse 3, but also verses 4 and 5, which are clearly millennial in application. When Joseph Smith revised Luke's passage, he added five verses that also apply to the second coming, and clearly identify the Savior as him for whom the forerunner would prepare the way. Since the five, the five verses that Joseph Smith added were put in the middle of Luke's quotation of Isaiah, it can be assured that, assumed that, it can be assumed they were part of Isaiah's original text. They are therefore, therefore cited here. They were inserted between verses 3 and 4 of Luke. For behold, and lo, he shall come, as it is written in the book of the prophets, to take away the sins of the world, and to bring salvation unto the heathen nations, to gather together those who are lost, who are of the, sh the sheepfold of Israel, yea, even the dispersed and afflicted, and also to prepare the way and make possible the preaching of the gospel unto the Gentiles, and to be light unto all who sit in darkness, unto the utmost parts of the earth, to bring to pass the resurrection from the dead, and to ascend up on high, to dwell on the right hand of the Father. Until the fullness of time and the law of the test and the testimony shall be sealed, and the kings and the keys of the kingdom shall be delivered up unto up again unto the Father to administer justice unto all, to come down in judgment upon all, and to convince all the ungodly of their ungodly deeds which they have committed, and all this in the day that he shall come. 
Clearly, John the Baptist fulfilled this prophecy twice, but there was yet, there was to be yet another fulfillment of the prophecy. Another forerunner who prepared for Christ's coming was the prophet Joseph Smith. President Joseph Fielding Smith observed that Malachi, as does Isaiah, speaks of the Lord sending his messenger to prepare the way before him, and while that does have reference to the coming of John the Baptist, it is one of those prophecies in the scriptures that has a double fulfillment. It has reference also to the coming of the prophet Joseph Smith, because that messenger which was to come and prepare the way before him was to come in this day. I am going to take just a moment for that, because it is important, and I will show you when this messenger was to deliver his message. The Lord declared through one of his prophets that before this second coming, his second coming, a messenger should be sent to prepare the way and make it straight. You may apply this to John if you will, and it is true. John the messenger who came to prepare the way before the Lord in the former dispensation also came in the dispensation as a messenger to Joseph Smith. So it applies, if you wish to apply it so, to John, who came as a messenger to prepare the way before the Lord. But I go further and maintain that Joseph Smith was the messenger whom the Lord sent to prepare the way before him. He came and under direction of holy messengers laid the foundation of the kingdom of, kingdom of God and of his mar marvelous work and a wonder that the world might be prepared for this coming of the Lord. Malachi 3, 1, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Who was the messenger sent to prepare the way of the Lord, and who was the messenger of the covenant? One of the messengers sent to prepare the way of the Lord at his first coming was John the Baptist. John's mission was performed in the spirit and power of the priesthood of Elias. Elias is the name of a forerunner, one who goes before or prepares the way for someone or something greater. In that sense, the Aaronic priesthood is the priesthood of Elias because it prepares and qualifies individuals for greater blessings. Joseph Smith explained, the spirit of Elias is to prepare the way for a greater revelation of God, which is the priesthood of Elias, or the priesthood of, that Aaron was ordained un, unto. And when God sends a man into the world to prepare for a greater work, holding the keys of the power of Elias, it was called the doctrine of Elias, even from the early ages of the world. Joseph Smith was also an Elias, in that he was a forerunner, one who prepared the way, who laid the foundation of the second coming through the restoration of the gospel. But is the restoration complete? President Russell M. Nelson said, We're witnesses to the process of, of restoration. If you think the church has been fully restored, you're just seeing the beginning. There is much more to come. Wait until next year and then the next year. Eat your vitamin pills, get your rest. It's going to be exciting. In the meridian of time, the way was prepared by John for the messenger of the covenant himself to come and bring the greater blessings. He who was mightier than John and followed after him to baptize with fire and the Holy Ghost was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is called the messenger of the covenant because he mediates the gospel of salvation unto men. Elder Bruce R. McConkie explained, Our Lord is the messenger of the covenant. He came in this, in his Father's name, bearing his Father's message to fulfill the covenant of the Father that a Redeemer and Savior would be provided for men. Also, Therefore, his ministry, through his ministry, the terms of the everlasting covenant of salvation came operative. The message he taught was that salvation comes through the gospel covenant. Elder Bruce R. McConkie also said, But this we know, the Lord sends men to match the message, and Joseph Smith, as a revealer of Christ and restorer of eternal truth, has been the instrument in the hands of the Lord of preparing the way before him. Thus from that Lord shall thus from that Lord who shall soon come, we hear this word, I have sent my everlasting covenant into the world to be a light to the world and to be a standard for my people, and for the Gentiles to seek to it. 
and to be a messenger before my face to prepare the way before me. The everlasting covenant is the latter day messenger before the Lord. It is the ancient standard right, raised anew. It is an ensign upon Mount Zion around which the honest in heart from all nations may rally. The everlasting gospel itself is the messenger, and whereas the gospel came through Joseph Smith, he becomes and is the messenger. He is who he it is who raised the Lord's standard. He it is who raised the ensign to the nations. He it is who waved the banner of truth and righteousness in the sight of all men. All as promised in the ancient world. When he comes to earth the second time, he will make more than one appearance before he comes in the clouds of heaven for all flesh to see him together. At least one of those appearances includes a sudden visit to his temple yet to be built in Jackson County, Missouri. Elder McConkie stated, Malachi recorded the promise speaking of Latter-day events that the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Certainly the Almighty is not limited to the number of appearances and returns to earth needed to fulfill the scriptures, usher in the final dispensation, and consummate his great Latter-day work. This sudden Latter-day appearance in the temple does not have reference to his appearance at the great and dreadful day. For that coming will be when he sets his foot upon the Mount of Olivet in the midst of the final great war. The temple appearance was fulfilled in part, at least, by his return to the Kirtland Temple in, on April 3, 1836, and it may well be that he will come again, suddenly, to others of his temples, more particularly that which will be erected in Jackson County, Missouri. In this connection, it is worthy of note that whenever and wherever the Lord appears, he will come suddenly, that is, quickly in an hour you think not. His oft-repeating warning, Behold, I come quickly, means that when the appointed hour arrives, he will come with a speed and suddenness, which will leave no further time for preparation for that great day. Luke 1, 76-77, To give the knowledge of salvation unto his people by baptism for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. First Nephi ten seven through ten, and he spake also concerning a prophet who shall who should come before the Messiah to prepare the way of the Lord. Yea, even he should go forth and cry in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his path straight. For there standeth one among you whom ye know not, and he is mightier than I, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. And much spake my father concerning this thing. And my father said he should baptize in Bethabara beyond Jordan, and he also said he should baptize with water, even that he should baptize the Messiah with water. And after he had baptized the Messiah with water, he should behold and bear record that he had baptized the Lamb of God, who shall take away the sins of the world. Doctrine and Covenants 84, 27, and 28 which gospel is the gospel of repentance and of baptism and the remission of sins and the law of carnal commandments, which the Lord in his wrath caused to continue with the house of Aaron among the children of Israel unto John, until John, who God raised up, being fulfilled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. For he was baptized while he was yet in his childhood, and was ordained by the angel of God at the time he was eight years old unto this power, to overthrow the kingdom of the Jews, and to make straight the way of the Lord before the face of his, his people, to prepare them for the coming of the Lord, in whose hand is given all power. Elder Bruce R. McConkie said, Our blessed Lord did not come unannounced when he made flesh his tabernacle and dwelt as a man among men. Neither will he conceal the day of preparation for his replendant second coming. He will announce his imminent return. Those with ears to hear will know he is soon to come. Clothed in glorious immortality to rule and reign among the sons of men, John the Baptist of blessed memory was his forerunner in the meridian of time. 
Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of latter days, whose innocent blood was mingled with that of the blessed Baptist, is his forerunner in the fullness of times. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is likened to children sitting in the markets, and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. In Matthew 11, 16 through 19, the Savior illustrated the inconsistency and unbelief of those who rejected him and John the Baptist. Elder Bruce R. McConkie paraphrased these verses. What illustration can I choose to show how petty, peevish, and insincere you are, unbelieving Jews? You are like fickle children playing games. When you hold a mock wedding, your playmates refuse to dance. When you change the game to a funeral procession, your playmates refuse to mourn. In like manner, you are only playing at religion. As cross and capricious children, you reject John because he came with the strictness of the Nazarites. And ye reject me because I display the warm human demeanor that makes for pleasant social intercourse. Began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. How can coming to know Heavenly Father influence me? The prophet Joseph Smith taught, if a person learns nothing more than to eat, drink, and sleep, and does not comprehend any of the designs of God, the beast comprehends the same things. It eats, drinks, sleeps, and knows nothing more about God. Yet it knows as much as we, unless we are able to comprehend all, comprehend by the inspiration of Almighty God. If people do not comprehend the character of God, they do not comprehend themselves. <laughs>